Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Birman Trauberer. I work for a Swiss company of developers. We are doing QGIS development on client side and desktop and on server. We provide services. We do WebJS with QGIS, QGIS server, and also with vector tiles and uh, some other things. And what I show you now is QGIS Web Client 2, which has rather long history. And the second generation had uh, certain goals, which were a modern responsive interface. We wanted to have less complexity than in the first version of QGIS Web Client. Uh, a scalable infrastructure, model base code, and new technology. That's always a topic in web applications. Uh, we favorized React.js and newer open layers versions. That was the, that was the prototype. Uh, it should be responsive and uh, have a, a, a good UI on different sizes. So this was the, the basic the start screen and with menu we do some Little things, we have the logo on, on top left, which, which has less uh, information and in, in a small size and more details. And this QG web client should work from like a minimal use case to uh, a big uh, installation. And the minimal use cases, we have just QGIS server on server side as a WMS server with some metadata, and we feed in uh, QGIS projects, and we have the web client on client side. So that should be everything we need, and that's the, the first use case, and we use this technology for achieving that. We have React.js with Redux, open layers, as I said, and we have this whole JavaScript uh, tool chain, which is Node.js, we use Yarn and Webpack, and we provide a demo application which is targeted to, to developers to customize the viewer. On server side, as I said, QG server, and we have optional additional services on server side. The core modules are a browser for different themes, we call it, or topics maps in the end. Uh, we have layer tree feature info. We have different search providers. Um, we have tools like measurement, sketching, redlining. We have a permalink generation. And we have a PDF print, which is a strength of QG server. We can use the QG server print templates for PDF printing. Uh, we have screenshots, raster, export. We have client side WMS, WFS import, also KML, and we have tools like for map comparison. I will show you that in a few seconds. Uh, the additional features listed here, they need additional server components. So for database search, classical SQL search, we need a search um, service on server side. For permalink, we need uh, a service on server side for reporting, we have Jasper reports and uh, service on server side. We support editing, digitizing, um, and also a, a map service, which is layer independent. We have printing of legends, uh, hate profiles, and self-registration self for, for groups. And all this is currently translated into seven languages, uh, user contribute translations and more languages are welcome. So I show you before I continue with the technical details so you know what I'm talking about. So this is uh, the start page of, of one site using QGS, uh, QWMS, uh, QWC2. Um, this is WMTS you see here, and when I zoom in, uh, here you have all the background. On the background map, I choose a topic. Uh, it's the one I like. And then 
I can click on a map for getting information. So that's the, the left click, which queries all visible layers. We can have additional information for the layers. We can highlight certain features. Uh, we have also right click information. This is this map info, which can be like an elevation or coordinates. Um, yeah, zoom, and we can change, switch background map, and some display, and, and changing scales, and so on. So that's the usual functionality you would expect. Uh, so I loaded one map, which uh, has multiple layers, so here I can go into the layer tree, and change settings if I want. I have additional information about layers. I have also um, a legend button which shows me uh, a printable output for all visible layers. And I can import layers, as I said before. I tried that. Uh, Mm -hmm. I filter that's a VMS with, w with many layers. Oh, I take this zones here. So and so that's a good example to show. Uh, Changing transparency, I can make that transparent. And what I can also do is use this map comparison feature. I have this comparison slider, this which compares with the top layer. Once on the left side with the top layer and on the right side without this layer. Okay. So that's about the, the layer and legends. I can share uh, a short link, the QR code if I like, and I can print the whole thing. Uh, I can select the templates. These are QGIS server templates, which are QGIS desktop, made with QGIS desktop. Um, Let's. Okay, I can also rotate. Doesn't make sense here, but just to show, I can add a note. And then, yeah, I don't know how quick it is because now we have a WMTS background, which is kind of slow for printing because we have to change that to a WMS on server side to get full resolution. I let that load. Um, it's not so fast here. So here it comes. Yeah, here it is. So it's a simple template with a logo and my text, and yeah, with some additional. Um, things on it. So that's the PDF print. I go to the measurement tools. We have different measurement tools. We can measure areas quite easily. And we can also measure lengths, which has uh, an additional functionality that it shows the height profile. And you can move here on the height profile and see it on, on the measurement line. And we have the redlining tools where you can add uh, feature, uh, shapes. And uh, I would like to fill it a little bit that and put the label on it. 
And that's also printable, so I have lines, points. I can edit this red lining, I can add more um, drawing elements, I can add text only, I can delete, I can adjust the size of, of fonts and line thickness, uh, quite a few things. And the last one is the raster export, which I don't show here. It's JPEG and PNG. So I can, oh, no, I did show it. <laughs> so that was the raster export. Um, okay, help. And login is for um, other maps which are protected. I will say more about that later. So, and now I want to show a, a different installation which has the, the latest search engine built in. Um, this is a, a solar based search. Um, I can search for instance for something like that. It shows immediate results as you saw as I type and it shows uh, different categories so it are on, on one side are features by themselves, and there are also maps. So I can add uh, a map layer. And so that's another approach. You start with an empty map or with background map, and you add your layers as you type. You can also type in addresses. Um, uh, here, this refined search shows you that it has found addresses with zone and maps with zone. And if I click on that, I refine the search just for addresses. So, eight, yeah. And the results are really good. It's, it's a full text search, uh, which uh, has a good index and a good ranking algorithm. So it's really state of the art search engine behind it. And when I click on address, it locates there and zooms into. And everything is printable. Um, yeah, I think that's the most most important thing to show. Now I do that. Oh, now I lost the presentation. So now I go to the backend for these additional services. We have a, a GitHub organization called QWC Services, which is a collection of, of backend services. Uh, they are modular, microservice oriented. Most of them are Python Flask application, which is uh, a minimal web framework. Um, it has integrated open API, Swagger documentation, and you can deploy them as Docker containers. There is a Docker Compose file and all the containers. So you have easily uh, start a test environment and you can also deploy it as WSGI. So that's the GitHub address for these services. I have many services there. And that's a picture of the architecture. We have um, the front end side. Well, it's a little bit dark. On the left is the browser. Then we have API Gateway, which uh, distributes the different URLs to the, the services. So we have uh, this front end services like uh, authorization, map services, and so on. And we have on the right, internal services like QG server in this case, because now it is protected by other services, not everything is public. We have, the we have Jasper reporting service in the background, and we have a configuration um, service in the background, and we have also data, the geo uh, uh, it's one database for geodata, and we have a configuration database with the administration GUI. So, 
what is available. We have a map viewer component, um, which is a front end for QG server, but has access control um, for viewers and viewer uh, parts of viewers, like tools you can um, have only for certain user groups. We have the OGC service front end, which can deliver WMS, WFS, and the print service, which can also um, have certain print templates only available for certain users. We have a search service, the classical DB search, and the new search I just showed. This is so new uh, that it isn't available on GitHub yet. This is went live yesterday. Um, we have a data service for editing data, map info, and the permalink service and elevation service. You saw all that in the in the demo. And administration GUI is for configuring or for ad administration of the configuration DB. You have user group management uh, and role-based permissions for certain resource types like maps, print and place layer attributes, and for data. Um, sets with uh, different levels, create, read, update, delete for certain viewers, viewer tasks, and you can also define custom resources. Uh, the authentic authentication services, we have one uh, interface, but different implementations, and so all these implementations, they um, issue internally, they do JWT tokens and pass that to the other services. But in front, you can have different authentication services. We have one for DB authentication, means user passwords are stored in the database. We have also LDAP and even more like Kerberos or, or SAML. The internal services is. Um, we have a shared module for all services. We have configuration service, QG server, and a Jasper reporting service um, for complex reports. And this is another uh, illustration what I, what possibilities I have for configuration. I can add custom models, modules into the viewer on, on top left. I built the, the JavaScript from that. I have this green, the components are for configura configuration, so you can uh, add QGIS projects or Jasper reports. That's the main thing. And the red things are custom code. And you can configure the, the config DB, obviously. Um, so, a few words about microservices. What are microservices? This kind of application was usually built monolithic. But you, in microservice world, you, you split it up in uh, little processes, which are uh, as loosely coupled as possible. They are, should be isolated and modular, and they communicate by HTTP. That's how uh, a Swagger API looks, or the, the user interface for, for uh, the API these services have. And you put that into Docker container that was mentioned a few times. Um, so your goal would be one single service per container. And then you have to run these containers or orchestrate them. Uh, Kubernetes is the most common um, software for doing that, which uh, controls all these containers. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? We have quite some effort for operations because we have many services floating around. We have many services to run. All of these have DB connections. We have to organize logging. That's a disadvantage, but we can scale um, with fine granularity. We can scale just uh, one service if we need, um, which is what is complicated is this authentication and authorization organization. It's more complicated with microservices than in a, in a monolithic architecture. But you can have different models. That is an advantage. You can mix technologies. You can have one service with Java-based application and one service with which, which is Python. And that's really a great thing. You can migrate these services uh, in these modules. And they don't interfere. 
Uh, here a few links. Uh, there is the source code uh, issue tracker and documentation and the examples I showed right now. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Piamin. Uh, any question for Piamin? Actually, I have two questions. Uh, does in your application, uh, you can maybe drag and drop uh, GeoJSON file or th things like that to add? Uh, GeoJSON? Yeah, uh, shape files, I don't know. We support KML only, not JSON, okay. but you can add uh, vector data on client side, yes. Yeah, okay, so you can add uh, drag and drop or maybe um, drag and drop, no? I think it's drag and drop to this entry box I, where I typed in. So there is a file section there and there you can drop it, not just not on the map directly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, someone in the ass um, assistance yeah. wants to if we can so what, show I, it. what I did show is this URL thing, and here you can uh, switch to uh, file, and here I can select a file, but I don't have a demo file at hand on these computers. Right now it's just KML. That was the custom request. But GeoJSON would be easy because we, everything here is GeoJSON. When we do this redlining, uh, all of that is GeoJSON. We also sent that to QG Server because QG Server supports printing overlays with GeoJSON. Save? How do you mean? I, I, you can print it, but you cannot save it on server side. It's just on client side and send it to the server for printing. Is there a service? Um, that you can you can edit data, yeah. Um, that's I can't show that here, but we have um, you can have editable layers where you get um, a similar interface like for redlining, and then you add um, a layer points, lines, and so on in a in a separate layer, which How is and you store that with a GeoJSON interface on server side. How custom all a uh, custom whatever, uh, of adding fields in, uh, in those layers that you're talking about? These layers, they have, uh, the fields are already defined. That's how they are stored in the database. And you get uh, entry form with these attributes. And then you can fill in the attributes to the, the, the added geometries. Or the, you can delete geometries and edit geometries. So you can't add any other attributes? You can't add additional attributes, user-defined attributes. They are defined on, on server side. OK, got the idea. Um, uh, is it possible to um, upload a QGIS project file, which defines the themes in this UI, uh, as I understood, uh, through the Client? Not through the client, but through the backend. I mean, the, the, right now, the normal way is to, to copy the, the map file somehow to the server, or the QG project file. Um, there is an experimental backend available in German only where you can directly upload the QG project file in the backend. But this is not published yet because it was written for a certain use case. Um, but not the user cannot upload map fi uh, project files. It's uh, this is an administration task. Okay, thank you. Another one question? Maybe no. Okay, thank you, Permin. Thank you. Uh, I think it's uh, time for the coffee break. Thank you.